Now you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast with just a search, Faith Temple and Cog. Listen on the go with your favorite streaming platforms, like YouTube, Spotify, Audible, Apple, Amazon Music, Google, Facebook, and Anchor Podcasts. If you would like more information about us, you can visit our website at www.ftnfcog.org. Lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, play. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. Oh, messing that all up. Lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. I was thinking deep in sin, far from the peace for sure, very deeply sin. Sink and rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the world who lifted me, now faith am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, we're going to turn it over to you. Hallelujah, Father God, we bless you. We thank you, Father, for who you are, which you're holy and you're righteous. And you're a true God. And I just thank you right now, Father, for what you're going to do in this, oh God, Bible study on tonight, Father. We bless you and we thank you. We magnify you, Father, before God, your word being brought to us, oh God, we ask you to touch. Lord, the servant, oh God, on tonight, oh God, as he bring forth it, oh God, as he teach it, oh God, let our hearts be open, oh God, and let us do what is required of us, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for everyone that's on the sound of my voice, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you touch their families right now, God, everything, oh God, every petition that they have put before you, oh God, I'm just coming in, oh God, there's agreement, there's two coming together, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you walk among us, Father, like never before. 
Jesus, God, we glorify you. We bless you for it right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, oh God. We come against sickness right now, Father. It's not of you, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, we come, oh God, against, oh God, the minds, oh God, that the enemy trying to speak to our hearts. And Father, God, you are holy, you are righteous, you are true. You have a purpose and a plan for us, God. And we bless you. We thank you right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, I just thank you, Father. Oh God, I give this to you, Father. Help me, oh God. Oh, God, we just good to see you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 We truly are. Uh, our subject tonight is coming out of this song, the, the spirit first, reflecting godliness. And it's the third uh, lesson, reflecting godliness in my demonstration of love. Now, myself, think that uh, love is something that we just scratched the surface on as humans. I don't think we really comprehend the depth of love that God has shown toward us. And we don't grasp how much uh, he requires of us in the area of love. Hallelujah. We go with quickly tell people we love them. Hallelujah. And we quickly uh, do things and everybody we love. But when we look at really, according to the scriptures, what God requires of us in, in demonstrating this love uh, being reflected in our lives, uh, we can. I lose. I can say I'm coming up short. Hallelujah. Uh, with uh, the area and the depth of love that that God requires of us. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to read the text. Uh, I'll read down. Hallelujah. We'll split them up. Hallelujah. I, I read down to number 12 and then I ask somebody else to pick up 13 through 21. Beloved, we're coming out of 1 John 4, 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we do dwell in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. And we have known and believed that the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelt in love dwelt in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear has torment. He that feared is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. 
If any man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loves God loves his brother also. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to move. Uh, it's a whole lot in those verses, and hopefully we're going to get through them. I guess whenever we get through them, because we might not get it all done tonight. But uh, love is a key issue in uh, our salvation, and one of the characteristics that we have to display to this world. Amen. And everything, we have to do it by love. Uh, before we, uh, let me go ahead and read this. Somebody want to pick up and read the snapshot view of the lesson? How many were you when you were born? do we seek to show our love we find occasions to send cards flowers host events give showers and showers with gifts we celebrate every little special moment and we out time just so those who we love know how we feel about them because it is important to us that others also know who we love how much we love and that we are endeared to one another. We coordinate our, our times, shows, showcase friendships, engagements, and wedding bands. We proudly change our names to reflect our commitment of un, 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 unending, love. unending love. As we turn our attention from loving humankind to consider our love for the almighty, eternal God. We focus on how we should demonstrate such love. Amen. 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 Uh, as the, uh, uh, the the writer of the lesson put in there so explicitly that we want to show people that we love mm -hmm. and we try to do out all kinds of things uh, to show them that we love them. Amen. Uh, uh, we celebrate birthdays. We celebrate anniversaries. We celebrate uh, things that times have been together. Amen. We want to be in uh, to let people know that how much we love this person uh, that we're trying to display this love for. Amen. Uh, and we can all can relate to this display of love uh, that we have. Uh, for the person that we're trying to show that we appreciate their love. In this lesson, <laughs> uh, I'm going to get to the points of interest, amen. Uh, <laughs> in this lesson, I want you to really concentrate on the love that God has shown toward us and what we required for us to show toward others. Not toward God, but toward others. Amen. Amen. Uh, John writes this chapter, and he starts it off with church chapter four, uh, four with verse one. He says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist. Well, ye have heard that it should come. Even now, already is it in the world. Hallelujah. Ye are of God, little children. And have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Uh, they are of the world. Therefore, they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. I, when my spirit, I was studying this, and it was, said he wrote these first verse, six verses 
setting us up hallelujah to how difficult it's going to be able to tell between the right and the wrong who's with jesus who's with god and who isn't god we have witnessed and lived among people that say they have said out of their mouth but they don't believe it in their heart that jesus is came from god uh, it's many people that say that hallelujah and 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 sometimes that's why i think you know over in matthew the seventh chapter it tells us we gotta know the fruit that they bear because they can talk one thing but they burn other fruit hallelujah john wrote this said the new the common denominator in all this is going to be love uh, then he points out that this love that we're talking about you can't fake it because it takes action huh, to serve god uh, you gotta you can talk about how much you love someone but it's going to take action and showing that you love them and then taking that action of love you're going to produce fruit hallelujah so i'm just trying to set the 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 the, 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 the stage for what we're going to be discussing because it's very easy to say you love something but then it's hard to take action toward that uh that person or that that situation that you find yourself in it's got to take love because God is love. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Amen. Uh, but let's look at the points of interest. I'll read them. And um, if somebody will read a closer, closer look at the lesson we give them, then we'll dive into this lesson. Love, points of interest. Love extends itself and sacrifices. Love is bold and without fear. Love is submissive and obeys. A closer look, anybody? Okay. To gain insight into love's demonstration, we need to look to the apostle of love. While Jesus surrounded himself with believers, the measure of their devotion and willingness to give all for a closer relationship remained a personal decision. Scripture teaches us that, that he chose the 12 and groomed them for kingdom work. Yet, of the 11 that embraced his teachings, only three entered into the closeness of their inner circle relationship, Peter, James, and John. Of these three, John embraced Christ so much so that he reflected the essence of Christ's character and his encouragement and teachings continue to strengthen the body of Christ, to abound in love, because God is love, and it is the measure by which all men identify us. Ironically, John's love sustained him, and although exiled because of his faith, he was the only apostle who died in his old age of natural causes. His love united him so intricately with God that he was afforded glimpses into heaven and instructed to write of God's majestic glory and end time events. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Love extends itself in sacrifices. Now, before we look at the narrative of in A, let's look at the scripture and see if we can get an understanding of what uh, John is trying to uh, get our attention. Like I said, the first seek one through verse, it was saying about the false teachers and how they're going to be easily slipped in among us. Well, verse 7, he says, but the discourse of love changes them. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Hallelujah. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And what John is demonstrating, he, what he's writing here is saying, uh, it takes action to show proof of your love. Uh, we can talk, uh, I love this one, 
And y'all know we've been discussing about this over here in our manner of conversation and in the manner of our, in our circle of influences. And we talked about how deadly the, the tongue is and how quickly it can cripple and hurt someone. Amen. But John here says that if we're operating in love, it takes action. You can't quickly say you love someone and then at the same time, not the same time, but later down the road or next hour or next week, start talking about them, giving our opinion about them and, and then saying they need to do change this or they need to change that. That's not love. Love extends itself towards them. Uh, love is, we all have been in bad situations. Love embraces the brother and sister to help them, to comfort them during their time of need or during their time of distress. Hallelujah. It takes love. And John is trying to tell us, hallelujah, that we got to uh, put this type of love that God is saying in action. Hallelujah. Uh, we love one another, for God is love. If God is love and we are the children of love, eh, you got to love your neighbor. You got to love your brother and sisters. If we're not, then we say, we're going to find out in the scriptures, it says that we are liar and the truth is not in us. Hallelujah. So uh, love takes it. We got to change our way of what, we, what love is. Now, I know everybody got their own definition of love. Hallelujah. And then and, and, and they, they declare they love something. Uh, husbands and wives get married. They love each other. But something down the road displeases him or displeases her that that individual is doing, and it causes them not to love anymore. We have often hear them say, I love them, but I'm not in love with them. It doesn't it, you can't just flip around love word love and put terminologies around it. If you love someone, you love them. Uh, there's no such I, I, I don't know how they came up with that terminology. I'm, I love them, but I'm not in love with them. Hallelujah. So how would they write that or justify that? Uh, I don't know because if I love something, Hallelujah, I'm all in, and I'm all in with God. Hallelujah. And I, uh, I want to, my brothers and sisters to know that I love them. And that's why I, we got to practice what the, the previous lesson said, slow to speak. Don't let nothing get you uh, riled up where you'll say things that uh, you regret later. Amen. The tongue is an unruly thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Filled with fire. Amen. Amen. And it is out to destroy anything come in contact with anybody want to make a comment before i leave on i wanted to say uh what i hope the one thing um there's a saying that i've often often hear people say well love me if you love me love me show me show me and a lot of people take that as you know i'm loving you i'm giving you shower you with gifts and all of that but giving people gifts and presents that's not necessarily love because there's a whole lot of guys who give their wives gifts and beat them across the head. That's not love. And we got to understand that just because we 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 shower people with things doesn't mean that we truly love. And we got to have that understanding of what the the true love is. That like we got um, verse ten says that um, herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a preparation for our sins. It's it's the love that he shared because he is love, like you said, and we got to express that love. I see you, Mother Smith. Yes, I'm, I'm kind of piggybacking on what Elder said. That's his love. That's the question. Uh, in the beginning, Bishop, you started out talking about how our love doesn't measure up. Well, it never will. Right. Because in our humanness, we're not capable. But dying to self, allowing the Holy Ghost to have his way, that we love with the love of Christ. And only God can do that work in our hearts. What we have to do is surrender to it, die to self, 
because self will go off on all kinds of tangents. Like you said, love you today, but do something I don't like, I don't love you tomorrow. But that's our humanity. And I don't think, except the Lord intervene, that changes. But it does change when Christ takes over, when his love flows through us. And I think about that scripture that says, if you love somebody that loves you, that's not a big deal. But when you love your enemy, that's God, because yes. that's the nature of God. When yes. we were sinners, he yet loved us and died for us and gave himself for our sins. So whenever I think in terms of walking this walk, I'm very aware of my human frailties and inabilities, but I'm also very aware of the mightiness of God and that there's nothing too hard for him. And all I have to do is say, Lord, you live through me. Holy Ghost, that you have given me, God. He lives through me. Yes. So, um, I, I wanted to give an example, and I, I hope I'm not taking up too much no, time. But y'all y'all have heard this testimony before that I did not want, want to go out on a date with Pastor Paul. I knew he was from the country. I knew he was looking for a wife, and I didn't think I was interested in any of that. But when I was sitting at dinner with him on that first date we had, the Lord hit me with a love for that man that never left. It was Holy Ghost inspired. I told him before he passed, said, Paul, I never stopped loving you. There were times I was mad with you, but I never stopped loving you. And I recall that experience I had at that table when God hit my heart with a love for him. So I know it wasn't my humanness, but it was God who instilled that in me. But I had to surrender to it. You know, I could have made, oh, we always have choice. Mm -hmm. you know, so um, that's all I wanted to add. Yes. You sitting up, you want to say something, Jonathan, or? Um, the, the thing with me is that as it relates to love, um, like I said, it's a love is an action thing. And I always think about what God said, but God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. A lot of times when you, he said, I don't want you to tell me you love me. Show me you lo lo love me. And sometimes it could be, and there's a difference between love and lust. Sometimes you can have lust and cause you to do things, but love calls you to endure things. Love is when you go to Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and you try to embody what's in there. But love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not boast upon itself. Yeah, love does not, em, there's no envy. It's just, it's just an outward expression of what you have on the inside. When yeah. that's there, then people can see the love and, and they can feel the love. But you just saying it from time to time, as, as um, Elder Wright would say, it doesn't do it. But, but when you're able to show it from, you know, Corinthians 13, then that really can really move a person because then they can see it in you. And they, when they were able to say, I love you, and they can respond back and says, I know, I feel it. Then you know that, that, that you're on the right track. That's and it. just to add to what Brother Jonathan is saying, um, the scripture says that by, th by this shall men know that you are my disciples, the love that you have one for another. The world is looking to see us demonstrate the love of Christ. And they and people are not dumb. They know the real from the fake. Oh, yes. So when Christ loves through us and we're able to, even when people do things to us, because he has done a work in our hearts, we're able to not respond in kind. That demonstrates that is the love of Christ dwells in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Everybody has hopped on on the love, and and I, and I wanted to, everybody saying that everything is right. Amen. I'm not is everything, in, but the thing I'm trying to get everybody to, to, as they saying these things, and I want people to listen to this study is it has to be put in action. Everything has to. You can't. Mother said you got to be sold out to God. If you if you sold out to God, you make that choice and you sold out. You can't cho choose otherwise because then you're going to find yourself not fulfilling the thing of love that you love God. Because the which scripture said, I'm reading verse 8, and it's really stuck home to me. It says, he that loveth not, knoweth not 
God, for God is love. Hallelujah. Love is so essential to our salvation and that to be disciples of Christ, we have to display love. And we read, Mother read over there in the, the thing about John, the, the revelator. I put the revelator there because we're not talking about John the Baptist. We're talking about John, the disciple of Christ. Amen. He was always found near Christ. He related to him as being laying on Christ's bosom. He was, uh, you know, the one you favor all the time because John always displayed love toward Christ. And as we walking in this walk down here in, in this world, we have to always be displaying the love we have for God through the love we have for our brethren. Amen. So in, 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 in displaying that love for God, our brothers will recognize that we love them. I hope that's making sense. Hallelujah. Uh, let me read. Uh, I want to read uh, something over in Proverbs, the 10th chapter and verse 12. And this is how it, uh, we get, this is how we move in our action. Hatred stirreth up stripes, but love covereth all sins. Hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. Uh, and when people say, quickly say, I can't forget, I can't forgive and I can't forget what somebody has done to me. Well, we had this thing about love. Hallelujah. If you love the way God intended us to love, hallelujah, love will cover a multitude of sin. In, in, in the Lord's Prayer, what we say is the Lord's Prayer, forgive me of my trespasses as I forgive them who have trespassed against me. I got to forgive them so God can forgive me. If I'm not willing to forgive, then God is saying, how can I, you ask me to forgive you when you don't have the compassion and love in your heart to forgive them, but you turn to me and want me to forgive you. That's why they say when you're done, you gotta uh, present yourself before God, before you start praying, asking for things, you gotta, uh, I forget how the scripture go. Uh, uh, let, repent before God. Hallelujah. But when hatred is there, and that's what I'm going to teach you. When hatred is there, we are quickly to backbite our brothers and sisters. We're quickly to say things about them. What we feel, what we feel in the cardinal, in the flesh, should be done. Instead of looking at love, God works it out. God turns it around through us, our actions of love. So you always, people say you used to come to the church for answers. They come to church for comfort. They don't come for church no longer. They come there just to do whatever, see whatever. Because deliverance is not there. Deliverance is not there because it's got to have love there. The love of the body of Christ got to be there. The love for your brothers and sisters. We have been in, in church and we going to the door and somebody greets you out of love and you going to church and somebody just, and just sit over there, sit over here. You know the difference when somebody really uh, is greeting, being a, uh, a doorkeeper, a good doorkeeper, and when somebody is not being a do good doorkeeper. Love is so essential that in our love walk with God, we have to display love for the brethren. Amen. Anybody got something to say? I wanted to say one thing where I want to pick, which is picking back and off of what Mother and Brother Jonathan said. And I want to talk about the, the lust because a lot of people, when we go, we go to church sometimes in a lustful thing, getting what we can get from God and not trying to receive anything from God. So we, they, they, they go for the, you know, even some people go, they go to church as to shout, as to say, I danced or go to, or pray to God, and try to get something. From God, but they're not showing the love. That's that's lust. That's lustful. I know we think about lust in other ways, but that's being lustful. Even 
around with other things where you try to get something out of somebody and not pouring anything into them or and, and trying to receive anything that's being lustful and what you were saying earlier about people um not going to church anymore just to the they get god they just going to church just to see what they can get and grab you no know, that's us being in a sense lustful towards god amen okay i'm gonna read the uh, love extends first paragraph as we examine john's epistle warning believers to try the spirits as a definite means by which one can determine if they are indeed born of god he finds it necessary to reveal how god showed his love for his creation mere oral expectations expressions of love alone fail to demonstrate one's depth of love words never prove love and are always an inadequate means of expressing heartfelt passion. God, John calls to our attention that God provided us an example showing us how to love just as he put his love in action. Amen. I want to, I hope you keep it up there, Elder. I'm going to come right back to it. But I want y'all to look at, we're talking about uh, just uh, putting it in action in Galatians, uh, the fifth chapter and the 13th verse. I want to say this now because it says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Hallelujah. We've been called to liberty. We have freedom, but we can't take what our freedom in God and our religion and our salvation, hallelujah, and let it serve the flesh. And I which can't be cardinal minded at the same time we wanna serve God. When we are in the flesh, you say hateful things. You do hateful things. You do evil things, hallelujah. You're in the flesh, as we just said, Elder just said, Mother Jonathan just said, Mother has just said, we're in the flesh when we are not doing it the way the spirit would have us do it. And that's what uh, separates us, hallelujah, because we know the spirit and the flesh always in a war together. The flesh wants to rule and the spirit wants to rule. And God said, I give you the choice. You can rule in the flesh, when you rule in the flesh, don't say you're of God, because then you're not operating in the, the love that God has. You're operating in the flesh, and flesh action can never fulfill the love that God wants us to display towards our brothers and sisters, because flesh is never going to go out the way for nothing, because <laughs> flesh wants to be what? It wants to be satisfied. Flesh wants to sit back and relax. Flesh wants to gather all, every, all his goods and gather in a silo and, and say, yep, let me drink and be merry now. I'm happy. I got everything. But love in the spirit causes you not to be seeking no thing. You will seek what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. You're looking to uplift your brother and sister. You're trying to make sure they are elevated. You're making, trying to make sure that they receive the love uh, and, uh, and and we want to show the love toward them. Hallelujah. So when 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 Paul wrote this in Galatians, he said, don't use your uh, uh, salvation or liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Hallelujah. But you got to serve, hallelujah, one another. We got liberty in Christ. Use that serving and love one another. Amen. So when when, when we, 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 we get caught up in this world, because the world do want to love, but there's hatred all around us, evilness all around us. Amen. But here it is, God put us here, put mother in her area in Richmond, put Dick McLean in Spotsylvania, put Elder Wright in Warsaw, put Jonathan in Stafford, and put us in here over here in uh, Farnswood, <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
to display love to a community that's in darkness. We have to be the light to the community because in us is light and darkness can't comprehend light. Amen. So we got to walk in love, walk in your liberty, walk in love towards our neighbor. Go ahead, mother. You, you sitting up because you want to say something? Well, I was listening to you um, intently too, but uh, I was just thinking about when you were talking earlier about John laying on the breast of Jesus, or it may have been what we read, and how he was intimate with Jesus. So he reflected the one he was intimate with. So the love that he's talking about, you know, the scripture says, we love God because he first loved us. You know, we, we are, are limited, but he is the one who transforms us. And our love for him is a response to his love for us. And thereby our closeness with him and intimacy with him causes us to reflect him. You know, so it is hard in the natural, like you were saying, there's a war between the flesh and the spirit to show love as God requires. Mm -hmm. But it's not hard when we allow the Lord to let us be who he's called us to be, the ambassadors. And that way you can have a different view, yes. even of things that people do, you know. Mm -hmm. And I have found if you, the Lord will enable you to look beyond people's behavior sometimes and see the hurt, to see the need, yeah. to see and, and to he'll prompt us to respond in a way to help. Because Paul used to say, hurt people hurt other people. And yeah. that's usually true. It's a lot of what comes against us, some of it, well, there's a spiritual element, of course. Yes. But it's also because of what's going on inside of the other human being. So anyway, I'm, I feel like I'm rattling on. But it's just so much, it's so inspiring, the lesson you're teaching. Yes. And, and, and mother, I just, and that's why I, it's, it's so key to our salvation, you know. When, we, when I was reading the lesson and studying the day, I thought about how he said, so scarcely, the righteous are the scarcely going to make it in. And one of the divided, I, I believe that one of the one effects is if you don't have love, you know, it's it's going to be the key thing. You can, because we can all go through the most, I quote scriptures. I can do this and I can do that. Uh, I know what the scripture says I'm supposed to do, but putting that scripture in action takes love. Uh, from one of the scriptures I read this morning, this one which came out of Deuteronomy, 10th chapter, 19th verse. It says, Love the stranger. As you went down to Egypt, you was a stranger. And I thought, about that. Wait a minute, they went down to Egypt. Down, they, <laughs> they were, and, but they said, when they first went down to Egypt, they were taken care of. Hallelujah. But now God is saying, We got to love the stranger. Hallelujah. And I start thinking about all that and start putting all these things together. It's going to take the love of God and the Holy Spirit for us to fulfill these scriptures, to walk in righteousness, to walk in love, to display just the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. It's going to take love. That's why I think that Paul put down above all, all get love, get love. You got if you can't prophesy and you're doing all that without love, what profit is it? It doesn't do any good. You can preach, it doesn't do any good if there's no love behind it. it, it so what, what's the purpose of all that? Because you got to have love. We have to display love, hallelujah, in our uh, holy lives. Hey Amen. It's got to be one of those uh, things that are demonstrated in our lives can't be something we talk about it can't be it, it, if you're just talking about it it's gone you, it, it just, it's a waste of time you can talk all you want but you, you're not saying uh you're a child of god amen because the scripture mother just quoted the scripture if you think you love your brother you can't love god i paraphrase it when we get down to it you see it it says if you don't love god you're alive. <laughs> you ain't saved. Hallelujah. Let me go on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And and uh unselfishness. Before we uh, well, let's go ahead and read uh second paragraph of love extends itself and sacrifices. 
Consider verse 9 and 10 of our printed text. God showed his love by giving out of himself and sacrificing his beloved son to be the propitiation of our sins. In other words, God showed his love toward us by sacrificing his only begotten son. We won't find that in no other scripture, in no other belief where their God sacrificed their son or themselves, hallelujah, for to show the love that they have for the people on this earth. God created us in love. God now says, I'm going to send you, because mankind fell with Adam, I'm sending my only begotten son to show you that I love you. I love you from the beginning. I love you just as I knew you before the beginning came. I love you. Hallelujah. I'm sending my only begotten son Hallelujah. to be the sacrifice, to be the one that paid the debt of your sins. Hallelujah. Mm. Wow. We may read through the scripture quickly. It is important for us not to gloss over the significance of the impact of this action. Man was created by a loving God and purpose to glorify God through righteous, holy living. As man fell to sin and was exiled from God in righteous judgment, God, look at here, God's love for his creation compelled him to give himself as he expressed his love by providing a way of redemption. Now, this is how God, this, the judgment of God is so righteous. Because man was disobedient to him, he stuck to his word and said, man, Adam, you can get out to God. Y'all, you, you sin, you, you, you won't have uh, either ever life. You, you, there's a, uh, the cord has been broken between you and me. Hallelujah. But the love of God said, I, I know I got I to have a righteous judgment, but I'm going to give you, Adam, mankind, because you were tricked in the fall. The serpent beguiled y'all. The, the serpent tick, tricked Eve, Eve and Adam uh, and, and caused them to fall. I'm going to restore you back through my son, my only begotten son, Jesus Christ. So we got a righteous God here, hey, but then we have a loving God. Hallelujah. I, my judgment said you had to go fall, but my love for you is going to make a way to re reconnect back to me. Hallelujah. Now that's a God of love. Hallelujah. Uh, we often say, why God allowing this? And we hear the scripture say, all things work to the good. We hear the scripture say uh, that God is hard and God is the wrath of God. But hallelujah, those that have served God and stayed with God, hallelujah, have found out as you're walking, hallelujah, and the things that you're going through, he made a way for you to escape by his love. Hallelujah. That's something to praise God about, saints of God. That's something to give God some glory right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he is love and he loves us. Hallelujah. We, we get over in there, one scripture. What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah can separate us from the love of God. Let me slow down, y'all. know, get a little excited. Hallelujah. But nothing. This God is righteous, he's sovereign. Hallelujah. He got righteous judgment. He can condemn. He got to stick to his word. But look, you love of God, the love of God will make a way. Hallelujah. He will bless you and cause you to be restored back to him. He kicked us out of the garden in Genesis. But when we get over to Revelation, <laughs> hallelujah, you're going to find the tree of life right there. Hallelujah. <laughs> in the new heavens and the new earth. The tree of life is right there. Hallelujah. Yeah, so that tells me that God is restoring everything, everything. Hallelujah. That man sacrificed. Ah, oh my God. Hallelujah. He gave purely because he is love. And his sacrificial giving alone proves his love. While we tend to foolishly believe 
that love is absence in the face of judgment. And that's how we feel now. Y'all know that's how we get. Man, this is, I don't, I don't yeah, this is yeah, people condemning me and this is happening to me, this is happening to that. But when you deal with God in judgment, <laughs> this is, he gonna show love. Hallelujah. God's judgment is so full of love that it opened the door for redemption, following the pattern established by God. Those who truly love God also extend themselves and make sacrifices that demonstrate their love for God through the acts towards their brother. How do I read that last sentence again? Following the pattern established by God. God established this. God put a pattern there for us. God sent his only begotten son that we can have and, and walk in love the way Jesus demonstrated it for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to while Christ uh, uh, found the pattern, those who truly love God also extend themselves and make sacrifices. <laughs> that means you go beyond your comfort zone. That means you, you don't have what you have. Hallelujah. Uh, you, you go beyond what your flesh and your uh, says you can do. Uh, you go beyond what's in your pocket or in the refrigerator or whatever you need. You see a need and you want to meet that need. That's love. That's the, the, the pattern that God has put before us. Hallelujah. Demonstrate that love for God through the acts toward their brethren. Amen. Anybody want to say anything? No? All right. I want to, I want to look at uh, Matthew says something in the uh, 22nd verse, 30, I mean, 22nd chapter, 39th verse. And the second is like unto it. And talking about the, the, two, the two commandments. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Gave us two commandments. If it's so hard to y'all keep two ten commandments, give me these two. Love the Lord thy God and love thy neighbor. That's unselfishness. Yeah, hallelujah. Talking about the unselfishness of a believer. Hallelujah. What we just read goes beyond. Hallelujah. And then uh, uh, John picked it up over in, in 13th chapter. It says, by this shall all men know that we are uh, Christ's disciples. If we have love one to another. For so the world will know if we have love one to another. Often we have found out that you go to church and they talk about the past. They talk about the deacons. They talk about the members. They tell you all this. Don't die all that. So something is wrong. Don't say you love when you got the, you're putting down the past. Don't say you love when you're putting down your brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Love extends itself. Love, hallelujah, sacrifices for the others. Amen. Uh, truly love the disciple of Christ, then we got to love the brother. Amen. Uh, the standard. I want to use one more thing, but I want to give y'all make comments. John 15 and 12 says, This is, Jesus said, This is my commandment that ye love one another. As I have loved you, and that's a standard, that's a pattern to live by. This one thing I command you, that you love as I love. And that's a great, that's a, 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 a very common uh, uh, scripture that Jesus put there for his disciples. Amen. That you got to love one another. Let's just love one another. Peter loved James. Hallelujah. And then and, and, and John loved uh, Paul. Hallelujah. Accept him. So we got to love one another. We got to go beyond what our flesh would do and be in the spirit and love unconditionally. Uh, anybody want to say anything? I don't know, Bishop, for some reason, when you were talking, it flashed through my mind when Paul was standing in front of King Agrippa and he was uh -huh. telling him about Jesus. That was love. He was this man who could pass judgment and would pass judgment on him, but he was concerned for his soul. 
and I just love that scripture. He said, it says, I'm almost persuaded. And Paul said, I would that all together that I would be persuaded. That that was a demonstration of love for someone uh, in the natural. You, you know, this is, would be, I guess, considered an enemy or at least somebody who has his, your life in his hands. Yes. <laughs> so I just and and, and when we get down to the lesson, love casts out fear. That's so, right. So when, when Paul knew that he was in love with God and, and he said, I'm pressed toward the mark, I'm, I give it all up. I kind of dumb for Jesus, just the knowledge of Jesus. Hallelujah. When he stood before King Agrippa, he said, you almost persuaded? No, let me tell you, King Agrippa, you need to be persuaded. Hallelujah. And like Mother said, he was one controlling his life. But Paul knew the ultimate. And Paul said, I'm, I'm in the spirit. Hallelujah. I, I'm serving God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. So really, you might hurt me in the flesh. Hallelujah. But you can't hurt me in the spirit. Ha, my God, hallelujah. Uh, so that was a good example, Mother, uh, of the love. Hallelujah. Then the last paragraph in that uh, thing says, this raised the question. Yeah, this is one of the questions y'all y'all say, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Is my neighbor next door to me? Is my neighbor down the street? Who is my neighbor? <laughs> hallelujah. Who is my neighbor? This raises the question. We're going to find it right down here. Who then is my brother? While the script, Christian community declares it is to be all individuals connected with a church who profess out of their mouths to be lovers of God, the answer lies firmly in the scripture. Will we find the answer to it? In the scripture. Now, you want to argue about who your neighbor is? Go to the scripture. Hallelujah. Jesus clarified it beyond doubt to true, true qualifications as we responded to the multitude, <laughs> Jesus gave us the answer. But we want to read through that answer real quick. That ain't the one the neighbor I'm trying to talk about. I, yeah, that, you ain't, you ain't, no, no, that ain't the one I'm, I ain't talking about that one. <laughs> Jesus said, this is who your brother, hallelujah. There came in Mark uh, 3, chapter 3, verse 31 and 35. There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing about, sent unto them him, calling him. And the multitude said about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And Jesus, and he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked around about on them, which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother. And my brother. He seen his mother and brother, but here's, here's where the kicker come in. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. Hallelujah. The ones that are doing the will of God, hallelujah, is my mother. They're the ones that are in the inner circle. Those are the ones that are, I have, uh, I call them my brother and my mother and my sister. Those ones that have, like John was in there. We talked about earlier, Peter, John's, and John. Hallelujah. How they were in the inner circle. Hallelujah. Uh, this is who Jesus classifies. The ones that are doing the will of my father. The ones that are uh, displaying love. The ones that are uh, forgiveness. The ones that are walking in the spirit and serving God in spirit and in truth. These are my brother and these are my mom and this is my those are my sisters hallelujah so their clarification of who that is who your brother is hallelujah and 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 so we got to understand that this is what god is saying how do we know it through love through love through love amen i won't say anything all right pre-adventure they assumed association was the qualification for brotherhood don't we see that in the church today I go to this church. I go to this church. Hallelujah. They, they're assuming uh, because they got association with them that they're a part of them. Uh, I pay my tithes over here. I pay my, I go over here faithfully on Sundays. I go over there faithfully uh, in that church. And I, I when they when they had their uh, uh what's that anniversary, everybody come and pay their dues to the church. And then they pay their dues and they all 
um, be in fellowship dinner, hallelujah. Uh, that's who I belong to. I'm an associated with him, too. That's who I am. And we see it every all through this world, hallelujah. Not just in church, but they in, in organizations, in, 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 in the kind of organization. We, because we associate with them, hallelujah, we are part of them, hallelujah. But uh, Jesus revealed something different, hallelujah. He said, uh, you got to be doing, <laughs> not playing, not uh, just sitting back in pew, not uh, smiling or clapping your hands and stumping your feet or rocking when the music playing and doing all that. No, that, that's not a, a, my brother. And that's not my sister. That's not my mama. But the ones that are doing, doing the God's father, doing the God's will to be the only common denominator. What is what a revelation of the Christian community? Something saying we love God does not does not place us in the brotherhood. And I think I enjoyed what I was talking about. Talking a good game and not have no action behind you, don't put you there. Talking a good game. Hallelujah, because there's a lot of people that can talk it. <laughs> uh, I met one guy, he could quote the scriptures up, forward, and backwards. He could go on and on and on, and he could talk the game. He, you, you would think he, he was the one that could put people in heaven the way he talked. Amen. He knew it all. Hallelujah. But then when you get him, uh, when he's not talking about the God, the scriptures, or actually, man, that, he living a total different lifestyle. Hallelujah. He's doing everything that he can do in the flesh. He's doing everything cardinal available to him. Hallelujah. So this can talk it, but don't mean, that don't mean you're in the brotherhood. Jesus said, what's in the brotherhood, my close relations are the ones that do the Father's business. That's doing God's will. Not the talkers, but the doers. In love, in love, in love. Because you cannot, hallelujah, if God can condemn us, and then give us a way of escape. Why don't we say the same thing, tell somebody the error, and then give them a way of correction? We we don't do that. We 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 condemn it. Boom. That's it. Ah, I ain't got nothing else, nothing else to do with it. It is only when we do the will, God's will, and keep His commandments that we are united in kinship and become brethren within the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Only when, only when we're doing it. Let me, if I got comments, I want to deviate a little bit from this. Go ahead, Elder. I mean, go ahead, uh, Brother Johnson. Um, there was a story that I, I remember, I think most, some of us know that happened over the last summer. And I remember it's just a sports story, but it was a basketball player by the name of Draymond Green, another basketball player by the name of... Um, um, Jordan Poole. And you know, for whatever happened, the altercation came out where he attacked him. And this is a person who was his mentor. And I'm sure at some point he considered him his brother, but then his actions Definitely. show, you know, his actions show not just to him and to other people around that says, you know, I don't see the love between the, the two of them. And to this day, I don't, I don't know they've ever been able to repair the damage that was done that that afternoon and when i heard mother smith say something hurt people hurt people that was his answer I'm, i was hurting so i hurt somebody close um close to me but so when we so when you have an opportunity to demonstrate love it's not a question of just showing love you know saying it every day or um, every day or every week it's just a, a second it's got to be up from the on the inside and, and so that's you know that's what, you know like i said it's, i always like to think of negative incidents that help me help me understand the lesson that's there when you show love and you extend yourself in love it's got to be consistent one of the, my last point is what bishop said to me a long time ago i said i want to start attending church he said well you do it you faithfully if you're doing it every week then i believe you you know if i if i see you coming week after week after week that i'm able to see the love that you have for the minute you know um that's that's not out there so it's all a question of when I'm looking at this, it says extending yourself and sacrificing. Um, it starts there. You know, when you extend yourself by showing the love you have for God and showing you you have for learning about the word, word of God, 
that's how you grow as a, that's how you grow as a Christian. And when other people see your love, then they can listen. Your ministry becomes more real. They'll listen to you. So I just wanted to share that. Amen. Amen. Amen, Jonathan. Thank you. Hallelujah. Bishop Jack. I know, but I was thinking y'all were saying, you know, love is not, you know, concentrating on your own self. It's always putting other people first and and what their need is. You know, you might have a need, but if the other person have a need and you put their need second, then you're not showing the love that God would do because God's going to take care of you. So that's just a thought I had. Uh -huh. Love, we can't show love in our flesh. And we've said that over and over again since we're here. Hallelujah. Uh, should we pick and choose where we love at? Romans 12 and 9 says, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Love cannot be picking and choosing where we're going to love it. God requires us to love, cannot be without simulation. It's got to be a steady thing in our lives. The brethren, the steady thing in our lives. Now we're going to deal with the neighbor, it's different between the neighbor. And the brother, Jesus had already declared who the neighbor, the brethren is. It said, the ones that are doing the will of the father, they're my brothers. They are my mother and they are my sisters. Amen. So it's a difference between the brethren and the neighbor. And you see, we'll find out that he says, love thy neighbor as thyself. Hallelujah. So this is. The only way that we have said over and over in this uh, study tonight, you cannot fulfill God's purpose in the flesh. You got to do it in the spirit. And Paul said you worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. No, Jesus said that you got to worship God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. So during the course uh, uh, of the Sermon on the Mount, one of my, he delivered the same message, the same thing that uh, John is talking about, that Paul is talking about. We find over in Peter too. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. And what they got to do with love? What they got to do with uh, doing the thing that God would have us do? But he said, beware, in Matthew, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Look what he says. You, you shall know them by their fruits. Love doesn't produce evil. Love doesn't talk about your brother. Love doesn't pour hatred towards your sister. He said, you'll know them by their fruits. What are they producing? What are they talking about? Are they just talking or have they put it in action? I would. Uh, uh, they they uh, need some food down there, but uh, I ain't, I don't know. I, I hope God sends somebody to them. I ain't got uh, yeah. They need a coat. And I got 15 coats. Uh, I hope so. I'm going to pray that God give them a coat to keep them warm. And I'm going to take mine down to goodwill. Hallelujah. See, love, <laughs> you know them by their fruits. A lot of people, a lot of people would talk the game. But when action requires them to give up something of their own, the flesh rises and does what? Oh, no. The flesh will what? Protect itself by all means. The flesh is not going to overextend itself. It's not going to put out the olive branch. The flesh is always going to be on defense. Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruits. <laughs> my Lord, my. do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or tessels? 
what they what they do, what they what they producing. Brows that cut you all up. Uh, they, they 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 got the 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 the, 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 the tissues and 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 uh, the, the the figs. You want figs, but you don't want the uh, tissues that come along with it. Don't show me something good, but then when it's time for me to get it, you show me something else. So we can present a good thing in church. But then we, when, when we get the time to have action to show what we got, we're showing something different. I don't have time for that. Now, catch me next week. Catch me on tomorrow. You know, it, 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 I don't, not right now. Hallelujah. Well, love, we've read over here that love, hallelujah, extends us. Love go beyond what the flesh can do because we recognize it's a spiritual thing that we're doing. Hallelujah. What did, what did Paul say? We rest against what? Right. Hallelujah. Principalities. Hallelujah. Let me go read it so we might be on the same thing because I don't want to be, you know, you, you know me in these scriptures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, before we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual weaknesses in high places. Wherefore, take up the whole arm of God, that you may be able to stand in the day of evil, having done all to stand. Hallelujah. So we're fighting. They're going to attack us. But we got love. You can attack this cardinal, but I'm still going to go beyond that and show you love. As Mother said, how do we get to love our enemies? <laughs> That's a great mystery to me because <laughs> because your enemies are the one that's trying to destroy you but here god is telling you to love them god is telling you to, to to put that behind behind yourself and love them hallelujah jesus knew he was going to be crucified he knew that the man at the table was against him he knew the one that slept with him had already made a deal to be turned over to the enemy. He knew that this one right here, hallelujah, had valued my life for 30 pieces of silver. It walked with me, slept with me, ministered here with me, hallelujah. And, and I trusted him with the cash. And I know he's going to kill me. He's going to be the one that's going to portray me. But Jesus, talking about the pattern, talking about the pattern that he laid out behind love of his enemy right down to the hour right down to the hour before he was betrayed he told him said go do what you gotta do not in a mean way but he said go do what you gotta do hallelujah because it was the love that he had for the father he could show toward his enemy amen he could love his enemy and not condemn him hallelujah hey my lord my god hallelujah uh, we gotta love First, uh, uh, let me read this. It said, uh, doing this, even so, every good tree produce, bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. With, with a tree, if he's using us as a tree in this parable, then we should be producing good fruit. Hallelujah. Not evil fruit. What comes out of your mouth should be good and not evil. It goes back to last week's lesson. You should be talking love. You should be talking good, edifying your brothers and sisters, not putting them down, not the backbiting with your tongue. Hallelujah. Uh, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. You ain't going to get it. Say you're a good tree and then produce bad fruit. If you're a good tree, you're going to produce good fruit. If you're a bad tree, you're not going to produce good tree, good fruit. You're going to produce bad fruit because it's in you. That's why you got to be born again so that good fruit will come out. Because if you stay like you are, all you might can try to be good, but you're going to produce bad fruit. Hallelujah. I think uh, the late Bishop Patterson said, it's a lot of good people going to be down in hell. They had good hearts. They, were, they did this and they did that. But they never 
Hallelujah. Accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I, I went here and I went there and I did this and I did that. But never. They had a good moral standards. I never do these and I never did that. Never. Good moral standards. But never came to know who Jesus was. Hallelujah. And said so they're going to be right there. Hallelujah. Every tree that bringeth not forth fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, Wherefore, by their fruits shall ye shall know them. Let me read that again. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is you down. In other words, if I got an apple tree out there and it's not producing the apple apples, then I need to hew it down, cut it down, hallelujah, and cast it in the fire because it's dead. It's not producing nothing. It's dead. Hallelujah. Taking a valuable space, I can go plant another tree that can be produce fruit. But I'm cutting it off and pulling it out. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Yeah, my God. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he, but he, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Ain't everybody. They call him Lord. Everybody say, you Lord. Everybody say, oh, yes, I believe you. I know this and I know that. Oh, yes, he good all my, all the time. God is good, good all the time. Woke me up this morning, started me on my way. Oh, I pray God. Hallelujah. Oh, good. Hallelujah. <laughs> that ain't going to get you there. If you're not producing the fruit, if you don't have action in your love, towards God, you are not what you say you are. You are a dead tree, not producing fruit. Why was the church here? Everybody was caught up in all this. Here. Why did Jesus, what did, was his commandment to told us to do? Go what? Teach all nations. The word of God. So the souls can be saved. But the church got all kind of things going on in this. And everybody caught up in all of this stuff. And all he told us to do, love them. Teach them the ways of me, the ways of God. Let the Holy Spirit teach them. Hallelujah. Don't, I, you got to do this in compassion and love. You got to bring them along. Hallelujah. That's what we're supposed to be doing that. But here we, you don't believe like I believe, you go on ahead. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, and, and I think, yeah, the, the scripture said, uh, 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 what is it? I go now. Uh, not the scripture. The scripture doesn't say this. The, the, I think I said this Sunday. The church back in the day, y'all remember when the people come to church and say, what must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. And we give them all things what they can't do. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't wear the long dress. You can't wear the, the earrings and the makeup and and you got all this, this is what, I, and then, and really what they, we giving them all this, what they can't, the negative stuff. And all they want to know, what must I do? And all I got to must I do is over there in Gene, John, John, confess with your mouth and believe in heart. That's, that's what you got to do. That's how we are now. We give them all this, all this negative stuff, and we need to show them the positive stuff of how God loves you. How he sent his only begotten son. How he did it. Sacrifice an example for us to live this way and that way. Amen. To be true to God. Amen. I know I'm way over time. I just looked at the clock, y'all. I just looked at the clock. I'm ready to hit second gear now. Hallelujah. But I just, I just want y'all to get grabbed. This is an important lesson in, 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 in to the fundamentals of our walk with God in our in our relationship with God. We you go back and study over the scriptures and you will find and do some cross reference in, into your scriptures. How you'll find that love is so important. Because without love, we wouldn't be here. Without God sending his only begotten son to redeem man back, we wouldn't be here. So it's going to take love for us to get all the way. We run in the race, but the run race got to be in love. We see a brother stumble, we got to stop, help them up, get them repaired, how to make sure they're all right, start them on their race again, and then you run your race again. Hallelujah. It, 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 that's how we're going to be know that we're loving. Because 
you got to have compassion towards your brothers and sisters, towards your neighbors, hallelujah, and your brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Uh, we got to walk in love, saints. Anybody got any uh, comments? And then I'm going to close out. Hallelujah. I, I got uh, one. Um, okay. When you asked the question of how can we love our enemies, and while you was talking, something popped in my head. He said, one, that we got to let God's love be bestowed upon us. Right. And God was saying, just as when Mother Smith was talking about her first date with Pastor Paul, how God breathed or um, his love for him on her or well, the, the words that she said, God said, you have to be the same way yeah, even with your enemies. Me off at 15, then with I, your enemies, I, you got to be the same way. Like I said, yeah. I did the research. Go ahead, I, I, you, you got cut off. I heard your last talk. Oh, and I, I, I was saying the same way that when Mother Smith was talking about her first date with Pastor Paul, how God like breathed the love for Pastor Paul on her. That's the same way we have to be with our enemies. We got to allow God to bestow that, put that love, his love on us so we can love our enemies, so we can pray for them because we got to see them in the same way that God sees them because there, there's a soul there. We, we want to cast them away, but we got to see how God sees. God sees us totally different as, as uh, how we see ourselves. Each individual, well, God loves, no matter what they do, God still loves them. And we got to see them as God sees them. And we, so we got to intercede and pray for them on that. And that's how God's love has to be bestowed upon us. And that's just, as, like I said, what, uh, what Mother Smith was saying earlier with her and Pastor Paul. Amen. Praise God. Amen, amen, Elder. I, I just wanted to add that, and when you consider yourself that we, I was an enemy of God as a sinner, yet he loved me. It helps to helps me to realize that I need to see other people, like Elder just said, as God sees them, because he saw me and made a way for me when I was his enemy. So how can we hate other people or dislike other people when we do what God did for us? Yeah. Hey, Mother. I uh, was when you was earlier when your cat was up there touching you on your shoulders. I said yeah. he was he was trying to make sure you, his relationship was right. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to get away from me. <laughs> uh, Brother Jonathan wanted to say something too. Go ahead, Jonathan. Uh, there's a song that uh, a church I used to attend used to say, and it helped me memorize this verse. I'm just going to cl close my statement in song because. But at the beginning, you started love lifting me up, but I don't really know that song. I had to Google the words. But this is the song that God laid upon my heart for tonight. It's really short, as most of my songs are. It goes, um, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everybody loves is born of God. And knoweth God, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Oh, beloved, let us love one another. First John 4, 7 and 8. Boom. <laughs> so I just want to, you know, this, that's what I had for today. But, yeah, okay. you know, but, but you started off love lifting me, so. Yeah, all right. So that's all I got. Oh, thanks, God. Uh, again, Deke McLean, I didn't hear from you. You want to close us out in prayer? Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Father, truly, we thank you, Lord, for this um, service and this Bible study that we had on today. We pray, oh God, that the words that we've heard, Lord, that not only, Lord, will we hide it in our heart, that we won't sin against you, Lord, but that we will govern our lives accordingly. Father God, we ask that you help us, oh Lord, to take that we've heard on tonight. Help us, oh God, to make love, not just a, a verbal expression, but Lord, an action word. We pray, oh God, that we won't do anything, Lord, that will cause shame and reproach to your name, but Lord, that we will walk upright, holy and acceptable, God, in thy sight. God, I pray, oh Lord, that you keep each and every one of us and that you dismiss us, Lord, from the service, but not from your presence. And we pray, oh God, that each of us will go with God in our prospective places. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.